hi this is lexi and welcome to my channel lexi's journey with cancer i will be discussing how i found out that i have cancer and you know the journey the steps that i'll have to take what i'll be going through um you know just to let people be aware guys 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 before you go into the video females get your three months pop smear done get your pap smear done if i if, every six months it is very 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 important i cannot stress that enough you need you guys need to get your pap smear done go to your health center go to a private doctor if you wish to a private gynecologist get your pap smear done because cervical cancer is a real thing and it's it's it, it's serious this cancer does not even at the earlier stage it does not even give symptoms so you'll be living with it and and you don't know guys i i plead to you as you reach 1920 get your pap smear done it might be uncomfortable but this is something that you guys need to get done so see you in a few the story begins i'll have part two because i don't want it to be long so see you in a few okay and uh, welcome to Lexi's journey with cancer so I am 29 years old and I am diagnosed with cervical cancer so I am going to tell you guys how I found out and then maybe i'll do a part two um in regards to the process and stuff like that so um two years ago i had my son i had my son in august of 2019. you know that after you have a child um you do a routine pap smear so i did the routine pap smear after i had my son and um, normally when you do a routine pap smear, they say if it's a case that you don't hear anything from the health center, then that means you're good. So, I was living my life, didn't hear anything from the health center, was not concerned because I didn't hear anything from them. Fast forward two years, um, two years, I was at work and my mother called me and she said that um, the health center called her and said that I should reach out to them as soon as possible because it's urgent so I'm thinking why clinic wouldn't have called me to say urgent so it got me thinking I wonder if something happened to my son or if something happened to my daughter Anyways, I got the number and I called them. When I called them, I spoke to a nurse and she told me that she has been trying to get to me how long, have not been able to reach out to me, so the call my mother. So she asked me if when I was a bit to be able to come to the clinic. So I said to her, I can come to the clinic tomorrow because I'm self-employed, so I could just go to the clinic either even the same day. So after that, no. My son is getting a little fussy. Okay. So the next day, I went to the clinic, and the nurse called me into a room, and she said that um, your pap smear came back, and we are seeing some. The, the report come and come back and say that we're seeing ab abnormal cells 
on the cervix and she was there talking to me and she said um you know if it's if it's cancer if you catch it at an early stage then it can be treated or whatever so I was there listening to her and she said that she was calling me however after I had my son like when I was going back to work I lost my phone so I didn't I didn't bother to get back that soon however my no my mother number was still on my record there the next of kin that's why them always ask the next of kin that means if they might try to reach out to you and they're not getting through to you then they'll most likely call the next of kin so for two years you have been calling a number and you're not reaching to me you're not get to me and you know things say you have to call the next of kin i used to work at a call center and if you call a, a number twice or three times and you don't get the person you'll call the alternate number now they take they took two years two years to tell me um to reach out to my next of kin anyways i got a a referral from the health center and they sent me to the hospital to admit to the gynecology clinic so i went to the gynecology clinic and when I went to the gyna clinic, you know, they did their observation and then they gave me a date to come back. Now, mind you, the date that I got to go to the gyna clinic would have been a day before my birthday. So, when I went to the clinic, the, the doctor asked me if I know what is phone biopsy so I said to her yes I read it up um, I know what it's about so they said that all right um, they gave me a date so this was in July this was the 14th of July my birthday was the, 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 the 15th so they gave me a date to come back on the 31st of August so the doctor said to me, all right, we're going to do a cone biopsy in which we're going to cut off a piece of the cervix and we're going to send it to a lab to test it to see what the abnormal activity, the abnormal cells are. So she said to me, go and save up some money and because we're going to have to send it to a private lab to get it tested. So it would have run me about twenty six to about $30,000. Anyways went home told my family about it i wasn't worried because you know i didn't know that anybody in my family even had cancer so i wasn't even worried about that however um when i was supposed to go back to the hospital on the 31st of august which would have been the anesthetic clinic when i went there they were not doing it because the, the oxygen they had an oxygen shortage due to the, the corona and stuff like that so they said to me that they will call me um and tell me when it would be a next date for me to come because after i did the, the um, anesthetic clinic then two or two, two three days after I'd do the surgery which was would have been the phone biopsy so anyways um when i went there and they told me that your oh, accident is not hospital so um you know accident is not a hospital so once we get back oxygen we'll call you um the lady said to me you might not get a call because persons were, were there before you so you know most likely you'll get the call further down so may I say everything happened for your reason right so after that now, the day I live my life same way, you know, um, waiting for the hospital to call me. So I had set up to do my learner's test. So one morning now, that was just maybe about two weeks after, they told me that I would have to wait because they don't have any accident. And 
I was going on my way to Manila to do my um, learners at Depot. So on my way, you know, because me studying, you know, so on my way, I got a call from the hospital saying that Alexia, um, you know, we are not available to do the surgery for you. So we want to know if you could come to the hospital tomorrow at 8 o'clock. So I said, no problem. I don't know what happened, but what the, that the news I want to get, mash up my head because when we go in at the learners, just me feel it. So I failed the learners and they gave me a date to come back. So the date that they gave me to come back to do the learners was on the 20, no, was on the, 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 the the 7th of October right um the next day after the learners remember they, they called me and asked me if I could come to the hospital the next day so I went to the hospital the next day and they told me that I would have had the the cone biopsy surgery done on the 6th of October so I had to reach out to the persons to depot advise them that I'll have a surgery doing so if they could give me a rescheduled date for the learners they said okay so I went and I did the biopsy. They put me to sleep. They cut off whatever they need to cut off to send it off to the lab. And they told me that it will take four to six weeks for the results to come. However, I did research it. Cause me love research. Me love you use Google bad. If me get a medication, me go Google. It. That's me. So I Googled it and I saw that when you do a cone biopsy, it actually takes four to six weeks so after they did the cone biopsy I paid them they send off the test the next day I had to go to the hospital to remove a pack because they had to put in some gauze on the cervix to you know minimize the bleeding when I went back the doctor said to me um do you have you said that you had two kids right and I said to her yes I, I have two kids and I don't plan to have any more because I went through a whole ordeal with my son she said okay that's good because um, while doing the procedure they didn't like what they saw she said that she she don't like what she see but basically they have to wait on the lab so you know I was a bit taken back because she's saying that you have anybody in your family that has cancer and I said to her no not that I'm aware of didn't remember that my father had gastric cancer but I said no she said okay well it's good that she said that it's good if it's cancer it's good that we take it at an early age so that we can you know remove what needs to be removed treat what needs to be treated seeing that you don't plan to have another child it's possible that we have to remove the womb so you ever watch a movie yet and see the people them go a doctor and when them are here the news like them zone out going on and different world while the doctor talk that happened that happened to me because she said that it might be cancer no these doctors they know what they are doing them go to school for it so when they see and, and things and they say oh it might be they already know what it is it's just that they have to send it to a lab to get paper trail or to prove to say yes the lab test for this and this is how it goes so that is the beginning of my journey i think i'm gonna have to do a part two because after i did the cone biopsy there's a whole ordeal of how I found out. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still waiting on tests to be done. Um, this is very new to me. So, it is very new. So, stay tuned for part two. I'm going to do a part two on this because I really don't want to do a long, long video. 
and tell you the truth uh, it has been bugging me to do this video because I need to create awareness and I really need to do this video so other females can you know know about their their their, their um what would I say no ancestors know your generation who seek from what all of those things get your monthly pop smear your three months pop smear done I think I owe it to other females to create awareness so that they know that things like these can happen and um I hope I'll touch somebody's life I hope you know I just want to create awareness because I don't want to be sick you know that some people sick and them keep it to themselves until you, you know say you say them dead they say oh you know say Paul the dead friend that no I don't want that because just like I me no want it for myself me no want it for anybody else and it happens to me so I think that I should let have more people more females be aware of this I'm gonna use this last one to reach out I am going to you know um, I am going to give step by step seeing that you, as I hear something you're going to hear something because this is totally new to me so anything me I go through you basically I go go through with me I have an MRI to do on the 19th of this month so guys I'll let you know what's going on but I'll I'll do a part two shortly maybe tomorrow or maybe a few hours from now because I'm telling you I'm tired and my body feels weak I might not look it but once you see under my eyes because I was recently discharged from the hospital because I've been in and out of the hospital so I'll do a part two guys to just let you know what's going on thank you for tuning in Lexi's journey with cancer guys thank you for the support the, the the encouragement from all my friends and family the early morning texts the, the the prayers that are going up thank you so much i can't thank you enough guys you're the you're one of the main reasons that you know keeps me strong and keeps me pushing so i don't give in to this big c thing so See you next time guys.